Welcome back to the Forensics Unplugged or main channel. Do not forget to subscribe and, and all that sort of stuff. Today I'm continuing working my way around the car, polishing this hard OEM clear coat. All I've got really to take out is fine swirl marks from claying, fine scratches from where I've clayed predominantly. Um, and I'm not looking to spend too long doing this, guys. I don't, don't want to remove too much clear coat. Just, you know, probably taking off less than a micron, just a whiz over. Make it look a bit nicer. Uh, degrease. And then I'm going to lay down um, a coat of Geon Primer very rapidly. Just like whoosh, whiz over it and buff it off and leave that coat for 24 hours. And then it's ready to be um, for a ceramic coating to go on top. And I think... I'm going to put the Gion skin on its own on top of the primer, which is a bit of an unknown. It's not recommended or supposed to use it on top of moss. I'm going to test it on a little test panel first and just make sure it's all pucker and then just do that. Why? Because I don't want a two to three year ceramic coating on my car. Um, hopefully the moss on its own maybe will last six months to a year, something like that. It just fits in with how I like to use it. I've got a feeling this skin is going to be really really cool from when i tested it really smooth and slick and hydrophobic so just going to use it on its own a bit like you'd use gliss on its own or something like that um providing it tests okay polishing wise i want to talk today about the pxe polisher we'll, we'll move on to that in a minute so i'm just polishing using f6 mid-range compound with the flex orange pads which are quite soft pads polishing pads but a little bit of denseness to them so you can still get into the paint a little bit if you need to you know the really they have the really soft red finishing pads in the range which you could probably use but i'm i'm i need a little bit of cut to get rid of that clay marring the cool thing the coolest thing is the the, the flex cordless technology that that i'm just loving guys um I said when I reviewed it years ago that I'd probably stick with the corded. Uh, the advantages of the corded is more grunt, bigger speed ranges, taco, things like that. Um, the disadvantage with the cordless is the cost. Um, slightly smaller speed ranges, slightly less kind of torque it feels like. But, you know, with what I'm doing today, it's absolutely fine. The biggest one is cost. Now, I've invested in these tools, guys. These tools have not been given to me. These have been bought. Um, so this is an XFE, and that's a PXE. So I've got about 900 quid's worth of tooling there in the kits and the batteries. And I've also invested, yes, invested and paid for with my own money. Shock horror. The uh, Flex lighting. Okay, and that, that co and the tripod. That wasn't cheap either. Um, I got that from County Detailing. Imran, Imran doesn't sell the lights. Um, so I've spent the money. Um, and I hopefully will reap the benefits of this equipment. And the benefits are quite small, aren't they, for spending that money? Um, but what with the channel? I figured now, I, or I, may, I decided about six months or a year ago that I wanted to start spending some money and doing it properly. And I'll never regret it. Do I really need it? The answer is probably not. I could use a cheap tool. Um, it, perhaps this is, all this equipment perhaps is more if you're in the trade. Um, but now with the size of the channel. Anyway, let's get on with them. Um, let's get on with what I'm showing you here. Now, first of all, <coughs> this polisher, I'm, I can actually talk and set up my polisher, um, but if I don't do anything correct, I'm gonna get shot down in flames. So let's just shake shake our polish, which is it's important to do actually, especially if it's been sitting around, although it hasn't, I've already done a set, so it's, um, I've given it a good shake. We're not gonna be using too much, as always with these, uh, Whenever you sort of use a smaller pad, scale everything down and you want less polish, using too much polish is something you definitely don't want to do. <clears throat> the thing about this PXC that really impresses me is the amount of power. I'm virtually out of power on this. Oh no, I've got three bars, okay, so I'm good. I should be good for about another half an hour of continuous polishing time. I've got two batteries over there, one big Bertha and one little one. So I'm, I'm always ready to go if this runs out, then I'll stick these on charge. Now with the big machine with 125 mil pad, even trying to polish, I need to put the tool down, which is a bit of a faux pas. I'll put it on the shelf there just for a second. <coughs> even trying to polish 
like in this gap here, you can see where it goes in into like a V-shape concave with a large pad is very difficult. And it's actually convex there, so it bulges in and then goes up. You can't like polish along, let's get closer to that convex thing with a free spinning dual action polish it, because it will just stall, because the outside edge is being compressed. You're just pinning the pad. Um, so you have to kind of polish up to the divot then you could polish down to the divot you didn't have a little mini polisher that's how you do it okay but a little mini polisher and also polishing with a big 125 mil pad and trying to polish over this line the pad will compress on this line even if you're just trying to keep it off there and it will stall out more so having a smaller pad or a combo of tools is always really really handy so for example I can have the PXE ready to go and just dot this, dot my compound out. You work when you're using this little PXE, you're gonna work in smaller sections. This is already getting quite big. Now, a problem I would have here, if I tried to polish, I could just about blag it. I could just about blag it, but really what I should be doing is swapping. If you look at the, the thickness of that bit there, I should be swapping this over to the 40 mil pad, really, and just polishing that little section. Um, or you can blag it. <laughs> or you can blag it, I'm just thinking. Um, I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to be horrible trying to polish that, because it's going to be going all over the place, and I should be taping those up. So I'm not I'm gonna, I'm not going to polish this section. I'm going to swap the pads over and do it properly. Um, so you can just see me using this tool in action, guys, which I always think is a cool thing, kind of live, you know. Uh, now let me just get this camera going. Hopefully, you have got a good view there, have you? you? Got a good view. Hopefully, it doesn't fall over when I'm doing it. I'm half blinded with the light. Um, let's just make sure we don't have too much. I'm going to polish along this channel under here and this section there and then do that bit on a separate set. So let's just work our, our little film out. One thing I do wish is this had an analog dial so I could just drop it down to one while the machine's off for spreading and then crank it up without having to turn off. So I tend to just spread at whatever speed it's on. This machine is best on speed four when you want to get work the cut. Speed three or four really is all you're going to use for, for normal polishing. So just working the, the product. Now I'm going to crank it up. There we go. And I'm just going to polish now. cool thing is it's got plenty of torque for a tiny little polisher it's got loads of torque surprising amount of torque that's the valley there so if i polish in that valley it's going to stall and i'm not really worried about polishing this section here so it's getting up Tight here is what I'm worried about. An awkward bit to polish that is. valley here. 
as soon as I go in that valley, it's going to want to stall. Okay. It's such an easy tool to operate and hold. It's so light. It's got loads of power. It is just an awesome little polisher and it can handle, it's not a complete, you know, it's not a complete nano tool. You can use it with this 75 mil pad and I don't need to go and get that, um, the XFE 7-12 out. Um, they don't have a cordless version of that, which is a bigger machine with more power. This has enough power for me, for me to be able to do exactly what I want to do on it, um, which is brilliant. So what we do now is we wipe down, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, so we just gently, gently let this cloth, this cloth has done a couple of buffs. Problem with using these short nap cloths as well is that gets full of polish quite quickly, even though you can't see it. And then when you touch the paint, you're putting more polish down. So it, it becomes less effective at removing and I find myself constantly flipping over. Um, I'm just stubborn because I've started using them now and I don't want to create another wash. <laughs> but look, there, I've switched sides. Now that's starting to become clear. The key thing is no pressure when you're buffing this because you do not want to be, if there's any like, I'm sitting in here, bits of grit and dust. These are like little dust magnets. They literally will pull in any dust, like a feather duster. Um, and it's in a garage. So dust can fall into it and then you go and polish. The last thing you want to do, be doing is putting little fine scratches back into the paintwork. Um, so we're, we're just buffing very gently. And I've got no tape, so I'm just making sure I haven't put any polish in there. Okay. I'm pretty stuffed in terms of how do I buff under there. I've got nothing really. Um, I would just use the primer polish to feel any scratches that are in there. I'm not too worried about those. There are probably, there's definitely some on the driver's side. Just put a bit of polish on the microfiber and give it a little bit of a buff. Okay, so I need to polish there and around there. You can always think you got the polish. And then when you've got the right light, this is why working in the right light is so important. If I'm looking here, it looks like a clean panel, doesn't it? Then I go, just turn the light off over there and you can see all that polish residue. So easy to leave polish on a panel if you don't have, or you're not working in the right light. Light just makes everything different. Um, it shows you everything. And um, when you're working without intense light, you can think things are going well. And you go and get the intense light and you'll see all the things you missed. So, yeah, light is definitely important. Uh, ooh, big scratch down there. I haven't polished. I've got to get the big machine out and polish all of this section. Got quite a big scratch there. We'll try and get that out. The rest of it's all kind of fine. How's it looking where we've polished? That's looking pretty good to me. You can see there's a bit of light there, but that's not the... That's not the uh, the light we want. Um, but you can see it's looking good. Where's my little mini? This is also very handy. So there we go. Just don't want any swirls. Going to be some marks, um, although it looks really good. This is an important part of the car. This is a part. I love the way I can just plonk that on there as well. It's really good. <laughs> and just grab it. That magnet is so useful. This part of the car is really important because you look down on it when you're standing there and it reflects the sunlight. So it's a part that you want to be good. I know it should all be good, but I will definitely spend a bit more time on there than I will on this thing and this black thing. Because that black thing, no matter what I do, it's going to be dirty again. Uh, it's going to be swirly again, very, very swirly as well. So I, it's, it's virtually impossible to polish that. So all I'll do is put the um, silica primer on it like, like last time. Um, 
I'm just testing the silica primer as well. That's been both of these have been have had the silica primer on it, and it feels the paint after 24 hours feels amazing. It's lovely. Um, very glossy the primers as well. What I can say about the primers though, let's put those over there. No, let's put that. We're done with that then. Let's do a clean one. What I can say about the primers is they do not cut anywhere near as good as the polishes. Because I've been trying to take out and testing. I did another video on this. I'm not sure if I bother publishing it because it's just quicker to say it here. I've been testing the Geon primer and the Tax Systems one <coughs> in trying to take out the clay marring nowhere near as effective as the geon polish you know the fine geon polish is taking out the clay marring and they don't feel abrasive i can't put any heat into the um panels and from what i understand i know this is true of the tax primer it doesn't contain any bespoke abrasives like aluminium oxide or anything it's, it uses an sio2 material that's the resin that has a slight abrasive effect and tack told me that so and i can feel it is nowhere near as abrasive so it can only feel very fine swirling even the clay the clay scratches if you like scratches the best word it can't feel all of those so um this is the thing if you've got very very good condition paintwork and you just want to whiz over it without removing hardly any clear coat you could use one of these silica primers very rare though if you've had to clay the fine polishing marks that i've put in on hard paint you need to polish to get those out there you go might sound obvious but now i never hear people talking about any of this stuff um what else degreasing just still using homemade panel wipe that'll be absolutely fine um is that it for this video there was something else oh yeah something else i wanted to show you so what else i should be doing ah oh, Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> so I would be then popping. Oh no. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> yes. Right. I got it. I got it. That's what I want. That is my 40 mil, well, it's 40 mil pad adapters. So in my box of delights up here. These purple pads are awesome. Got little purple ones there. Where are they? I'll we'll try and keep all these nice and clean there. That's what we want. So I'll take one of these. I should have had that available. Pop it on there. And if I ever need to swap, I don't have to sit there untwisting anything. It's a quick release on here. So look, this is another great thing. Like with the Daz Pro Plus, if you want to swap from the five five inch plate down to the seventy five mil plate, you got to get a spanner in there and take it all off. Same with the Hybrid Nano, you have got to put a tiny spanner in there to change adapters. With this, it's just pull back, let go, then you just pop in your new one and you're polishing with a different size size. So that's great. Um, that is a really nice feature, actually, guys. So there we go. So you just pop the pad on it, uh, and then you want to go back off and then on and look at the quality look at the quality of the parts just unbelievable this feels so well engineered um yeah the chinese they're gonna have a hard time copying this <laughs> they're gonna give up um this is not gonna be an easy one for them to copy I hope Flex have got patents on some of this, these designs as well to stop the copiers. Because for me, this is a much more powerful mini tool than the Nano. And it just feels a lot more beefy. Uh, just incredible power for the size. For the size, it's just phenomenal. Such a useful tool. Every time I show this video, people are like, in the comments, what is that tool you were using, John? What is it? Um, it's a very desirable thing, but it's also become um it's become something that's very very important to me um so great you know you just have to look at a car if in doubt <clears throat> you know trying to polish even polish down there with a 75 mil pad is the wrong size so you're going to be wanting to using 40 mil pads if you want to tape all that up and then you can use those um 
you know, so it's having the right tool for the job always helps. It helps you do that job a little bit better, doesn't it? You can improvise without it, tape up and just use a bigger polisher. Um, but having the right size polisher, especially with free spinning things, although that in rotary mode won't be free spinning, but um, having the right size pads and stuff really, really helps. So I'm gonna ca crack on guys, cack on. <laughs> and today is Wednesday and they are lifting the lockdown so we can officially um we can officially go for drives and stuff like that so i think that there's probably a lot of people wanting to head out i i've problem i've got is i don't want to take this one out because it's in the middle of being polished so i can't uh, my blue peril is um i still have the snapped snapped wheel bolt and i'm waiting to get the drill to take that out so i can't go driving that hard uh, even though that's running really nicely now. I really want to take that for a proper drive and then, of course, do some exercise. I don't think you're allowed to just go for a drive, <laughs> but you're allowed to go for a drive to exercise, I think. I don't know. Um, so I'll drive. I'll go for, to Goodwood. I know where I'm going to go, to the little viewpoint, and then you can walk up to the top and have a good look over Chichester, and I love that point. So I'm going to do that and then have a little drive around on the way back, which I think is allowed. But I'll probably do that in a few days' time, so gutted <laughs> gutted you can also play tennis so i'm allowed to go and play my brother-in-law at tennis um i was just thinking though i don't think they've thought that through because like you're gonna be holding the balls aren't you not you know the balls that you hit <laughs> um and then so you're gonna hold them and if you've got if i've got the coronavirus and i'm all sweating and i'm holding on to the balls the tennis balls and i'm whacking them over and then and he's going to be holding them you know and you're going to be rubbing your face because you're all sweaty and stuff like that so i don't think they thought that tennis one through because i think they just thought oh it's okay to play tennis because you you can social distance on the other side of the court but of course you're going to be touching the balls <laughs> anyway look there's a lot of people worrying about all this corona stuff aren't they rightly so obviously rightly so um rightly so so yeah it's like they say isn't it you just gotta be cautious i think hand keeping the hand kit cleaning thing around really reassures me having that in the car so after i've gone out and i've gone shopping or something i get in the car i just wipe my hands down that seems to make me feel a little bit better like oh i've decontaminated i'm safe any virus on me is gone um so that's that's where I'm actually, but I'm not. I'm not that worried. I think I've already had it. I spoke to you, didn't I? Um, back at the end of February, midway through February, I had a, I had a virus. That was about before I'd even heard of this Corona thing. About tenth of February, something like that. About four or five days, really ill, really like weak, flu-like kind of symptoms, but no snots or anything like that. Just a headache. Just felt like death warmed up, and then then got better. And then about two weeks after that. I had a sore throat and a cough and three days of like feeling really knackered and tired and a bit fluey. And then it took virtually two months for that cough to go. There you go. Um, so maybe maybe that was I corona. I hope it was. Uh, it wasn't too bad see if it was, but it probably, probably wasn't though in my luck. And I'll still go out there and get it again. Uh, but there you go. So, uh, and I'm still coughing now, but my red eyes and my cough that you keep hearing i think is pollen allergy it's tree pollen season and it gets into my lungs <coughs> it just gives me a slight cough and it goes worse if i go for a walk my eyes start streaming so i think it's pollen allergy god damn it everything's breaking down never don't get old never get old folks stay young forever young and healthy <laughs> okay i'll take take care and uh, i'll see you soon